Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 Series PLC communication. We will be connecting the Productivity 2000 Series PLC with our computer running the Productivity Suite software. A micro, micro USB and an Ethernet RJ45 communication link will be made to our programmable logic controller. The latest Productivity Suite software version is 3.10.2.1. This is the programming software that we will we installed last time and we will use to create logic for control. We will be connecting the P2000 PLC to the Productivity Suite programming software with both the micro USB and the Ethernet RJ45. Once connected, we will be automatically setting the PLC configuration and writing this into the controller. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at our actual controller itself. And you can see from last time, this is our assembled uh, Productivity 2000 PLC. And we have our CPU unit. We have our output card. We have two input cards, one being the simulator module input. So. Um, previously we just put uh, the hardware together but if we look under this door here you will see that we have now our, our 120 volt supply now going into the controller and so what you'll notice is there's my wiring diagram here so I'm just I'm just supplying 120 so if I were to power this up now or apply the power what you will see is we will get a boot display and then it will go into the normal uh, run display or the normal display. So let's just power that up right now. And there we go. So there's my boot. And then it goes into our normal display here. You will also see that we have connected our USB port located right here. And we have connected our Ethernet port. You can tell by the light here, which is, says that it's on on the front. And if I were just to tilt that up a bit, you will see that that's going into that first input. So that is my connections. So the next thing we'll do is power up our actual uh, software that we installed last time. And we will get a splash screen. And then we're into the software itself. And you will notice that any previous projects will come up here. And that's the project that I, I, uh, I previously stored. So if you have no project, this would be blank. And what we do is we connect to the PLC by hitting the uh, read the project from the, the, C, the CPU. This is a quick uh, way of getting information or continuing a project that you already have. But if we don't have that on, and I'll just close that off now, we can go to uh, online right here or choose choose P CPU or we can go to um, under our application tools we can go to control uh, CPU and under that we can say choose CPU and the third method we can do is go under CPU and we hit choose CPU each one of those will actually come up and it will actually show us where we can actually uh, connect so if right now you can see my ethernet is not quite connected. So if I plug that back in and I have my light on, then what we can do is we can hit refresh. And again, here's my two methods of communication. So once I select the CPU one, you can see that my selection on the right hand side here under my CPU connections um, window will now change. So right now I'm communicating my USB 2.2 and I can say blink the CPU display. And when I do, you will see that that CPU display now starts blinking, indicating that I have communications from my USB to the controller itself. And we can hit stop and that will stop that blinking. So we know that that communication is good. Next, what we'll do is take a look at our ethernet display and again, we could start blinking and unblinking, but we know it's the same CPU because we have the same device part number. 
which is P2-550. And we also have the same MAC address, which is the uh, address for every um, IP address on a network. And that is uh, the same. However, the IP address that we have here on it will not create, not be connected to our network that we have here. So I'm going to change the CPU IP and name uh, button here. And when I do, what we can do now is we can then put in the one that we want. And we will put 192.140. Um, and our gateway will be 192.168.1.1. And this is usually the gateway to your router. And our DNS will be, we'll use the Google DNS. 8.8.8.8 and our alternative is 8.8.4.4 and this is where we can change also our CPU name so our CPU name can also change in order to um, have different names of CPUs or PLCs along our, our network so we'll leave it to as a default and we'll just hit OK now what it's doing is it's processing there it's changing the IP configuration through our Ethernet port to our controller. There we go. And what you'll notice now is that we have our new IP address. So we can double click on the actual Ethernet. And now what you'll notice is it'll say a warning because we don't have a valid project inside the PLC itself. We'll just say OK. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, we are connected. You know it's Ethernet because we have our 192.168.1.140 uh, IP address. And you can see here that we have no security, um, runtime transfers, okay. And we can see our controller stopped and we are indicating that we're online to it. So the, the next thing we'll do is actually, then we will start a new project. We can start a new project by hitting this new project icon or we can do file new project. Either way we'll bring up the same thing and it will say okay what would you like to program. In our case here we, we see we have our, our P2 550 which is what we are connected to right now. Our, ba our chassis base we can start setting it. Right now it's set for 15 but let's uh, leave it there. But what we'll do is We'll say to go to hardware configuration. This will call up our hardware configuration menu here. And on here, you'll see that it says read the system configuration. This will actually go online to our PLC, read that information and bring it back to us. So let's do that. And it basically gives me a warning saying that the discovery um, of any of the uh, remote drives, like our uh, Photos X uh, modules or our motion control modules um, will not work unless we um, already have a project in the controller. Because this is a brand new controller, we don't have a project yet. So we'll just say, and we don't have these actually connected. So we'll just say OK. And what it's doing now is just reading our system. So it's going out there, looking at our rack and determining what cards are located on our rack itself. Then we said we have a mismatch or a base mismatch and that base mismatch is due because we did say in our configuration at first that we had a 15 slot but it really is a 7. So you want to replace the base in the project configuration and we're just going to say we're going to say yes to all. So now what we come back with is this is exactly what um, is driven here or what is now um, on our base unit. We didn't have to manually do any of this. So if we double click on our local base unit, because that's all we have currently, you will see here is our base unit, my CPU unit, my power supply, etc. So um, double clicking on the power supply, it will bring up the other um, parameters that we can change. So and there's all my uh, tag information about the actual CPU itself, my Ethernet ports, in remote access, which I don't have any yet right now, and my serial ports and the communication for them. Is it okay? 
Next, what we can do is we can actually go into the individual modules. So here is my output um, card. And it's an eight point isolated output relay card. And it says stop program when this module is disconnected. Then we have uh, an option saying allow program to run when this module is disconnected, which means hot swapping. That means that as this program is running, I can remove that card and replace it and then put something else. This is important for um, critical equipment. Now remember this controller can handle up to well, well over 4,000 IO. And because of that, you can have sections of your program still running and you can swap out these cards and fix them. So, and there we have our default addresses here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just say, let's, uh, let's enable the hot swap to happen. And that just gives you a, a window here indicating, do you really want to do this? And we'll say, okay. And then it comes back and it says now, allow the program to run with module disconnected. We'll hit okay on that. And what you'll notice is we have a red dot now above our configuration over that card, meaning that card can be hot swapped. Now let's do the same thing for the next two input cards. So there's my input card, 16, 16 bit source sync input, 12 to 24 volt. And there's my default uh, inputs, my default, my default tags. And then what we'll do is we'll enable our hot swap. Okay. And then for our simulator, again, here's my uh, input points, my input points will allow the hot swap. So here is my end rack. So the Proactivity 2000 automatically will configure, it will read that hardware, bring it back, and then we can enable our hot swap uh, options. So let's close that down. So now we have configured that uh, information. Next, what we want to do is because we've changed it, we want to save our project. So we can hit the save project here, or we can hit the file, save project. When we do, it comes up and asks you, well, how, where do you want to save it as? And we will call it the same as what it has right there, first program. And then you notice it, it, it saves it as the automation direct project, ADPRO. Let's save because it's already there where it's going to ask us if we want to overwrite the existing we'll say yes so now we have our save project and down at the bottom here you'll see we have the project saved but our cpu project status is out of date that is because we enabled that hot swapping to happen and we haven't transferred that program into the controller yet so what we can do is go up here to this icon and it will say transfer project to CPU. And we hit that, it will bring up a transfer project CPU. It will transfer this program now over to that CPU. And what you'll also notice is that now we have on the bottom of the screen, our project saved, we have our CPU up to date and runtime transfers available. And right now we're in stop mode. We could go over now and flip the switch and now we are in run mode. And remember in run mode, we said that we can literally unplug this now, this hot swap without that going off a run. So let's just try that out. We can unclip that simulator card and we'll pull that down and off. And you can see that we are still in our run mode. We haven't created any errors at all. And we can replace that card and then lock that card back in. There you go. And you see our, our PLC is still up and running and running well. Now you also notice that we're just going to hit show desktop. So um, on our uh, window where we're actually writing our ladder logic, we do have an end statement already. So that was part of the program. So that's why it's allowed to run. We don't have, we don't have any real ladder logic yet, except for an end statement that we wrote with our configuration file. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, 
please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.